Mr. President, it's been suggested that had your esteemed ancestor known that soil from the family home would eventually be worth 50 cents a packet, he would never have left. Mr. President, I'm a working journalist with the newsroom of Irish Radio and Television, Radio Television. I was asked to be Master of Ceremonies at this function. It was my privilege to accept. It was suggested that I was asked by the Secret Service because I afforded the best cover in case of bad weather. <laughs> in fact, Mr. President, I am the product of both the Protestant and the Catholic traditions in this country. And as such, I welcomed your declared enthusiasm for peace and prosperity in this country and justice both for those at home and for those abroad. Thank you, Mr. President. We would like to make a number of presentations to you, sir, if you could approach the, the podium. We have a gift, a presentation to be made by the chairman of the Ballyperine Community Council, Martin Neville. It's a pictorial record, Mr. President, in the unlikely event that there isn't a photograph of this lying around. It's a pictorial event, mis uh, record, Mr. President, of everyday life in this parish. It's bound in leather. It's a gift to you from the people of this parish. We hope that you like it. Martin Neville, I'd like to say a few words of welcome. Mr. President, Mrs. Reagan, distinguished guests, Reverend Fathers, ladies and gentlemen, Caird Mila Falteroy of Galea, on behalf of the community here, I extend to you a sincere and warm welcome to our village of Ballyporeen. Mr. President, these are Ballyporeen's greatest hours, which will always be cherished by us and never forgotten. We are especially proud to welcome you to the home of your ancestors. You are now one of our own. What we have presented you, sir, Mr. President, is a presentation book in which we set down details of your links with our parish and of the community we live in today. We hope it will revive pleasant memories of your visit to Ballyporeen. Mr. President, sir, another gift to be made to you will be made by Councillor Ned Brennan. It is the coat of arms of this county, and a rather heavy coat of arms too, Mr. President. And with Councillor Brennan are a number of his county council colleagues. With your permission, Mr. President, I'll show it to, the, to our audience. I assure you that's worn on the wall, not around the neck, Mr. President. It's extremely... <laughs> we have one more presentation to make, Mr. President, and that is a plaque. It's a gift from the parish. And I'd like to call on Denny Walsh, representing the, although he's from a, a, another townland, shall we say, he represents the entire parish, Mr. President. If I can describe it for those who can't see it, it's a penal cross, a chalice, and a carved representation of the church just up the road where the president's great-grandfather was baptized. Thank you. Councillor Brennan would like to say a few words of welcome to the president. Uh, Mr. President, Mrs. Reagan, Mr. Minister, 
Mrs. Barry, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the people of South of Prairie, it's a great honour and privilege for me to extend a very warm and sincere Cape Meal of to, to the President of the United States, Mr. Ronald Reagan and Mrs. Reagan, to Ballyporeen today. Up until a few months ago, few would have thought that the President of the greatest nation in the world would be here in our midst in this small but very beautiful village of Ballyporeen. But the Irish ha always have a longing, a longing for their homeland, even when it, their distance away from it is measured not alone by thousands of miles, but also by many generations. And so it must have been with you, Mr. President, because today you are with us in your ancestral home at Ballyporeen, and how very welcome you are. As you know, Mr. President, the bond that ties Ireland and America is a very close one. The Irish were very much to the forefront in building up your country into the great nation it is today. Up until the past 20 years, the movement was always from the Green Shamrock Shore to the shores of America. However, Ireland has now taken her place among the developed countries of the world and the tide of emigration has all but ceased. American investment in this country in terms of industry and tourism has played a major part in our development. And there are many fine examples of that investment in South Prairie where American industrialists have found our county to be an ideal location to invest. Our high technology, technology industries in Ireland, many of, who, of whom are native, com, can compete with the best in the world. And I don't want you to be worried, Mr. President, when I tell you that some of them are now actually exporting computer components to your own Silicon Valley. I know that our close industrial links will continue and that you will play your part in encouraging American investment here. As a matter of fact, I think you have already started by personally creating a major new tourist industry in Ballyporeen. I would like to, ext I would like to finish by extending once again a very warm and sincere Irish welcome to you and to your good wife, and I hope you will have many fun memories of your visit here today. When we received confirmation of your visit, the council, my council felt that you should be presenting with something which will always bring back the memories of your visit to South Prairie. We therefore commissioned the arms that we had the honour to present to witness. Mr. President, it's rare in the career of a newscaster that he has the opportunity to say in person, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hey. The, in the business that I formerly was in, I would have to say this is a very difficult spot to be introduced to you who have waited so patiently following this wonderful talent that we've seen here. And uh, I should have gone on first and then you should have followed <laughs> to close the show. But thank you very much. Nancy and I are most grateful to be with you here today. And I'll take a chance and say, Vin ther na herin. Did I get it right? Yeah. All right. Well, it's difficult to express my appreciation to all of you. I feel like I'm about to drown everyone in a bath of nostalgia of all the honors and gifts that have been afforded me as president. This visit is the one that I will cherish dearly. 
You see, I, I didn't know much about my... I, I didn't know much about my family background, not because of a lack of interest, but because my father was orphaned before he was six years old. And now thanks to you and the efforts of good people who have dug into the history of a poor immigrant family, I know at last whence I came. And this has given my soul a new contentment and it is a joyous feeling. It is like coming home after a long journey. See, my father, having been orphaned so young, he knew nothing of his roots also. And God rest his soul, I told the father, I think he's here too today and very pleased and happy to know that this is whence he came. Robert. Robert Frost, a renowned American poet, once said, home is the place where, when you have to go there, they have to take you in. <laughs> uh, well, it's been so long since my great-grandfather set out that you don't have to take me in, so I'm certainly thankful for this wonderful homecoming today. I can't think of a place on the planet I would rather claim as my roots more than Ballyporine County Tipperary. <laughs> My great-grandfather left here in a time of stress, seeking to better himself and his family. From what I've told, we were a poor family, but my ancestors took with them a treasure, an indomitable spirit that was cultivated in the rich soil of this county. And today I come back to you as a descendant of people who are buried here in paupers' graves. Perhaps this is God's way of reminding us that we must always treat every individual, no matter what his or her station in life, with dignity and respect. Uh, and who knows, someday that person's child or grandchild might grow up to become the Prime Minister of Ireland or President of the United States. Uh, but looking around town today, I was struck by the similarity between Ballyporeen and the town, the small town in Illinois where I was born, Tampico. Of course, there's one thing you have that we didn't have in Tampico. We didn't have a Ronald Reagan lounge in town. <laughs> <laughs> well, the spirit is the same. This spirit of warmth, friendliness, and openness in Tampico and Ballyporeen, and you make me feel very much at home. What unites us is our shared heritage and the common values of our two peoples. The, so many Irish men and women from every walk of life played a role in creating the dream of America. One was Charles Thompson, Secretary of the Continental Congress, and who designed the first great seal of the United States. I'm certainly proud to be part of that great Irish-American tradition. From the time of our revolution, when Irishmen filled the ranks of the Continental Army, to the building of the railroads, to the cultural contributions of individuals like the magnificent tenor John McCormick and the athletic achievements of the great heavyweight boxing champion John L. Sullivan, all of them are part of a great legacy. Speaking of sports, I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate an organization of which all Irishmen and women can be proud an organization that this year is celebrating its 100th anniversary, the Gaelic Athletic Association. I understand it was formed a hundred years ago in Tipperary to foster the culture and games of traditional Ireland. Some of you may be aware that I began my career as a sports announcer, a sports broadcaster, so I had an early appreciation for sporting competition well, congratulations to all of you during this GAA centennial celebration. I, I, I also understand that not too far from here, 
is the home of the great Irish novelist, Charles Joseph Kickham. The Irish identity flourished in the United States. Irish men and women proud of their heritage can be found in every walk of life. I even have some of them in my cabinet. One of them traces his maternal roots to Mitchellstown, just down the road from Ballyporeen. And he and I have almost the same name. I'm talking about Secretary of the Treasury, Don Regan. He spells it R-E-G-A-N. We're all of the same clan. We're all cousins. I tried to tell the secretary one day that his branch of the family spelled it that way because they just couldn't handle as many letters as <laughs> ours could. And then I received a paper from Ireland that told me that the clan to which we belong, that in it those who said Regan and spelled it that way were the professional people and the educators and only the common laborers called it Reagan. <laughs> so, meet a common laborer. Uh, uh, the first job I ever got, I was 14 years old, and they put a pick and a shovel in my hand. And my father told me that that was fitting and becoming uh, to, to one of our name. The bond between our two countries runs deep and strong, and I'm proud to be here in recognition and celebration of our ties that bind. My roots in Ballyporeen, County Tipperary, are a little different than millions of other Americans who find their roots in towns and counties all over the Isle of Erin. I just feel exceptionally lucky to have this chance to visit you. Last year, a member of my staff came through town and recorded some messages from you. It was quite a tape, and I was moved deeply by the sentiments that you expressed. One of your townsmen sang me a bit of a tune about Sean Tracy, and a few lines stuck in my mind. They went like this, not that I'll sing. Uh, and I'll never more roam from my own native home in Tipperary so far away. Uh, well, the Reagans roamed to America, but now we're back. And Nancy and I thank you from the bottom of our hearts for coming out to welcome us, and for the warmth of your welcome. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, Mr. Ronald Reagan. This is your last chance to say hello and farewell to the President of the United States. <laughs>